Hello everybody and thank you for joining me on our first Crowcheck Industries tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go over the standard mates, coincident, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, lock, distance, angle, and concentric. We'll go over the more advanced mates in a later presentation. The first mate we're going to go over is the coincident mate. This mate type allows you to align selected planes, edges, and faces along the same infinite plane. You can also mate two points together, or mate a point to a plane, edge, or face. So here we've selected two faces, the face of the blue uh, cube and the red cylinder. And you can even use, you can also use mate alignment to toggle the orientation of the parts. We like the, uh, we want to stack them, so we're going to keep it that way. Now to center the cylinder, we're going to have to mate the planes together. So we're going to mate the two right planes. Hit the green check, and this lovely little pop-up mates toolbar. And we're going to mate the two front planes together. So see here, the cylinder will slide slightly. And again, hit the green check. Okay. So now we have to put the yellow cone on top. So we're actually going to select the edges. So you can see how the edges can mate together using the concentric mate. And that puts it on and centers it. But you can still rotate it. So we are going to mate the two planes, the the top, uh, excuse me, the right plane for the cube and the front plane for the, uh, uh, for the cone. And as you see here, the assembly is now fully defined. The parallel mate brings two selected planes, edges, or faces into alignment with one another. Here we have two bars that are hinged on one end. The green bar can be moved freely while the blue bar is fixed. To fully define the assembly, we are going to open up our mates menu, select parallel, and then select the end face for the blue bar and the long face for the green bar. So this brings these two faces to be parallel to one another. The bars themselves are actually perpendicular, but the faces are parallel. And if we delete that out, we can see that you can also mate a face to an edge, as we see here. Again, once we hit this check, the assembly will be fully defined, as you see on the bottom of the screen. We can take it one step further and meet a face to a plane. So we are going to go and open up our feature tree and select the face for the blue bar and the, um, the front plane for the green bar. And hit select. Now if we don't like the orientation we can simply f use the mate alignment tool to flip the alignment of the parts. We're going to hit OK and the assembly is now fully defined again. The perpendicular mate is similar to the parallel mate only instead of bringing two faces, or uh, two faces, planes, or edges into alignment with one one another, they are set at an angle of 90 degrees. So as you see here, as we select the end face for the green bar and the end face for the blue bar, the two are set, or the two faces and the bars themselves are set at an angle of 90 degrees, and the assembly is fully defined.
The tangent mate mates a curved surface, such as a sphere or cylinder, to another component, such as a body, face, or a plane. It's basically a coincident mate for curved bodies. So as you see here, we're going to mate our green sphere to the orange wall using a tangent mate. Actually, we went through the wall. So we're going to use our mate alignment tool to switch it or to rotate it for the proper alignment. Now as you see here, we can transition the sphere in the x and y direction, uh, but not in the z direction. We cannot pull it away from the wall due to that mate linking the two parts together. Let's just look at this from a couple different angles just to verify. If we wanted to lock down all three axes for the sphere, we would simply mate or add two additional tangent mates, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis, as we are doing here. Once we hit the green check, we'll see that we can still rotate the sphere itself, so it's not fully defined, but we cannot pull it from its, this point in space. We would have to add additional mates utilizing the planes of the sphere to fully define it. Again, let's take a look at the cylinder and let's mate that curved surface to the wall body using a tangent mate. And again, it is locked in place with that contact between the cylinder and the wall. And we're going to add another tangent mate. Oops, excuse that, misclick. Let's just clear that out. We are going to meet the edge of the wall to the cylinder curved surface again with another tangent mate. So now it's locked down in two axes. We can lock it down in three by mating it with the sphere itself. Again, it can still rotate but cannot transition. The lock mate keeps two components in the same position and orientation relative to one another. As you see here, we have our green and blue bars again. And if we enter a lock mate between the two, we will see that we can no longer rotate the green bar about the blue anymore. Uh, anymore. It is now fully defined, as well as the blue. But if we go in and we actually suppress out these three coincident mates that are fully defining the blue bar, we can see that the, t the assembly can be moved, but you cannot change the orientation. You can only change its position in space. The distance mate specifies a distance between two component planes, faces, or edges. We're going to reuse our tangent mate assembly in this demonstration and create a mate between the front plane of the green sphere and the wall. We're going to set that to one inch and hit the green check. And we're going to further lock it down by adding another mate between the right plane and the right face of the wall and the right edge of the wall. Set that to one inch and hit check. If we don't like the direction or orientation, we can toggle those with that checkbox or the mate alignment options. And as you see here, we can only transition the sphere in the y direction and it can no longer be rotated. Now let's mate the top face of the cylinder to the sphere using a distance mate of, one, of two inches. Hit the green check. And as you see here, the two are now moving in unison along the y-axis. It's a little tricky to transition the uh, cylinder over because it's still free in the z and x-axis. So let's lock that down so we can get a better view. So we are going to create another distance mate between the right plane of the cylinder and that right edge. Set that again to one inch. Hit the green checkbox. As we pan over, you can see that the two components now move in unison with one another, maintaining that two-inch gap. 
The angle mate places components at a desired angle from one another. You can select an edge, a face, or a plane when establishing this mate. Here we're going to set a 45 degree angle mate between the two interfaces of the green and blue bars. I hit the green checkbox and as you see on the bottom of the screen the model is now fully defined. Additionally we can flip the dimension to invert the orientation of the green bar. You can also change the mate alignment down here for additional option uh, for additional orientation options. And last but certainly not least on our overview of standard mates is the concentric mate. The con concentric mate orients two cylindrical, spherical, or conical faces so that the parts share the same center line. Here we have a green spinner and a blue bracket. We're going to add a concentric mate between the two. But as you see, the assembly is not fully defined as the spinner, as the spinner can still be rotated. To lock down its rotation, we must hit this checkbox here for lock rotation. Now the assembly is fully defined. If you are working with a large assembly with many components and you wanted to simultaneously lock down all concentric mates at one, with one move, you would simply right click on the mates icon in the feature tree and select lock concentric rotation here. Thank you all for watching. This has been a presentation on the SOLIDWORKS standard mates. We will release presentations on the advanced and mechanical mates soon, so please subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with the channel. If you enjoyed the video and you learned a thing or two, please hit the like button as well.